I am specifically pleased for the opportunity to address narcissistic personality disorder since we are facing a turning point in, in our studies and uh, especially in the diagnosis but also um, further down the line in treatment. Um, uh, there was a risk uh, a few years ago uh, of uh, MPD being excluded from the DSM-5 and it was reinstated last year uh, in the context of the work group's uh, proposal of a hybrid uh, model, uh, which uh, a model that was really, really beneficial for um, uh, NPD. Uh, but um, the latest decision is that uh, the personality disorder section in DSM-5 will remain unchanged, so the trait-focused uh, um, uh, diagnostic criteria set for MPD will remain. However, the uh, proposal that uh, the DSM-5 work group um, outlined for personality disorders will actually uh, be included as a section three, whether it is an uh, appendix to be put aside or a source of inspiration, that's I suppose how we decide to, to use it. I have decided to see it as an uh, really a, a um, opportunity to begin to, to uh, reconceptualize um, uh, the, the, the diagnosis. And in this uh, presentation, I will uh, aim at uh, pointing to the limitations uh, with the present trait diagnosis, which uh, indeed had impacts on both the diagnosis and treatment and the way we in the society is look at and, and uh, treat narcissistic personality disorder. Um, and I will discuss some of the new diagnostic lines in the alternative hybrid model uh, that can be uh, used, continue to be useful in our diagnostic thinking. Then I will go over some uh, recent uh, research, oh, some recent uh, uh, research on um, self-regulation and uh, empathic fluctuation, and then I will uh, say something about um, um, uh, implications for treatment and alliance building with narcissistic patients. So, um, these are the well-known by now criteria for narcissistic... What happened here now? <laughs> uh, is there... Uh, have I done something here? Yeah, anyway, um, everybody are well um, informed of the double A's, uh, 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 attention seeking and arrogant um, uh, uh, traits, the triple E's, envious, entitled, and exploitive and the three related to grandiosity and, and superiority and then lack of empathy. That's uh, uh, in some of the diagnosis of, of NPD. And there are a number of shortcomings. Um, okay, uh, excuse me. Okay, there are a number of shortcomings in, in this uh, trait-focused uh, NPD diagnosis. Um, there is an incon insufficient conceptualization of narcissism and, and, uh, and uh, narcissistic personality disorder. It does not include uh, and capture the nature of narcissism from normal and healthy to pathological and malignant. And uh, uh, aspects of both healthy and pathological narcissists can coexist in, in narcissistic, people with narcissistic personality disorder. Uh, it, it does not ca capture the phenotypes of pathological narcissists, grandiose and vulnerable, and it does not capture the, the expressions of pathological narcissists, which can be overt, external, interpersonal, uh, as well as internal, subjective, or what we call covert. Uh, in addition, it does not cover the self-regulatory fluctuations in self-esteem, in emotions, uh, in empathy, and in interpersonal uh, relations. 
So there, is, uh, there are efforts to redefine the construct of um, NPD, uh, and I will just briefly summarize. Uh, first of all, there is um, a, a clear ag agreement that there is an underlying internal pain, sense of inadequacy, insecurity, shame, and rage uh, in uh, associated with narcissistic personality function. That internal uh, experience may not, or may or may not be uh, uh, present or, or visible. There is grandiosity and vulnerability coexisting, and there are overt and uh, or covert expressions of both grandiosity and vulnerability. That's Aaron Pinker's research that have been really groundbreaking to, to, sh to conceptualize and show that. Uh, there is a functional range of n in narcissistic personality disorder. There can be pr uh, MPD can be present in high function, even, even in, in really high functioning. Uh, people, as well as in, in severely disabled people, and that makes this uh, personality disorder somewhat um, different. And there is also um, underpinnings of narcissistic trauma and fear, um, underpinnings and, and self-regulatory factors in, in narcissistic personality functioning. With narcissistic uh, trauma, I, I differentiate that from the, the traumatic experience is usually f uh, found in uh, borderlines, in, including physical or sexual abuse, uh, uh, neglect, and so the psychological trauma in, in narcissistic personality disorder usually have to do with, uh, with um, self-esteem related uh, uh, things. I can go into that further if you have questions. Um, we shall also take a um, uh, look at um, uh, the shortcoming, uh, not, uh, sorry, no, 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 no. the alternative um, section uh, three, how MPD is outlined. Uh, it consists of a, a first section of uh, uh, describing impairment in personality disorder in uh, terms of identity. Narcissistic personality disorder has excessive reference to others for self-definition and self-esteem regulation. Ex exaggerated self-appraisal may be inflated or deflated or vacillate uh, between extremes. Emotional regulation mirrors fluctuations in self-esteem. So self-esteem regulation and, and, and the feeling states are, are interrelated. Self-direction is a very important uh, thing. It has, for, especially for, for identifying narcissistic personality functioning. Uh, it has to do with goal settings, and it's based on gaining approval from others. Personal standards are unresolvably um, uh, high in order to see oneself as exceptional or too, too low based on a sense of entitlement. And uh, people with MPD are often unaware of own motivations, and these, these are suggestions. Uh, empathy, and the, the, I think this is one of the most um, uh, important and groundbreaking um, changes, namely to, to identify that empathy is an impaired ability. Uh, 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 it is not uh, 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 absent, present uh, thing. It's an um, uh, impaired ability to recognize or identify with feelings of others. Um, there, there can be the ability of being excessively attuned to, to reactions of others, but only if perceived as uh, relevant <coughs> to, to self. And intimacy, the fourth area, relationships are superficial and exist to serve self-esteem uh, regulation. Um, uh, and the, there is sort of a striving for <coughs> need for per personal gain. There is also a brief um, uh, trade section. Grandiosity is uh, still uh, uh, an important um, feature and uh, attention seeking. All uh, are aspects of uh, uh, the dimension of uh, the category of antagonism. Um, I'm going to focus specifically on two advantages in, in this, namely the self-direction concept and empathy. Uh, Self-direction has to do with self-agency, and self-agency is uh, have become increasingly important for 
conceptualizing uh, functions uh, and uh, uh, it's specifically uh, applicable for um, a, a narcissistic personality disorder since it, it relates to competence, decision making, sense of control, internal, both internal and external control. And empathy is now a capability with impairments and fluctuations. Uh, first, a little about self-agency, a uh, little conceptual background. It conceptualized the subjective awareness and ownership of goal setting, planning, initiating, executing, and controlling one's own thoughts, intentions, actions, and accomplishments. Um, and uh, of, uh, that's the general conceptualization for Anagi, Gallagher, and others. Uh, the, then, to be a little more specific, it conceptualizes narcissistic interpersonal and self-regulatory strategies, such as attention-seeking, competitiveness, self-esteem, enhancing relationships. And if you go further down and take a look at uh, the subjective experience of fluctuating or loss of self-agency is especially consequential for people whose sense of self-worth is fragile and whose ability for interpersonal relatedness is compromised. That's uh, Knox, a British uh, uh, specialist on, on self-agency. Uh, there is also some uh, supportive research uh, on uh, self-agency and psychopathology. Disturbance in self-agency is uh, has uh, um, uh, shown to be uh, uh, proven to be related to, to psychopathology. Uh, one study showed that discrepancies between predicted uh, and actual action effect decreased sense of uh, agency. A perceived loss of control of events, which is very central for, for narcissistic uh, people decreased experience of authorship of instigation. And schizotypal traits correlated de deficits in prediction, uh, which uh, adds to a weaker sense of um, self-agency. Um, we have other recent research that is more focused on, on empathy. First of all, it is the uh, German-based um, uh, study that um, differentiated and emotional and cognitive empathic functioning and found that um, NPD subjects displayed significant impairment in emotional uh, empathy but showed no impairment in cognitive empathy. Uh, however, they showed a motivational uh, deficit of fluctuation. They were able but unwilling to recognize uh, others' feelings. Uh, we should take a li little more look with that. They also tend to overestimate their own capacity for, for uh, em empathy. Uh, another study with subjects uh, uh, not diagnosed as MPD but high on narcissism um, that showed that there were difficulties accessing their own emotions. Uh, and difficulties uh, accessing and simulating others' uh, affective states. Uh, they displayed a dis decrease in the activation of right anterior insula during processing of emotional phases. And uh, that, in clinical terms, means that there is a shift from inter to intrasubjective relationship and an increased focus on self. Um, uh, and then there is a um, uh, uh, additional study on emotion recognition. NPD subjects were less accurate in recognizing emotional expressions in others' faces, especially fear and disgust. They reported themselves as sensitive to others' emotions, however. Um, in addition, there are uh, uh, several studies on um, uh, clinical and as well as uh, empirical on emotion dysregulation in intolerance in MPD. Alexithymia, for instance, the, the inability to feel and identify own feelings uh, have uh, consequences for, for uh, uh, MPD. There is uh, sort of a, they, they have difficulties uh, distinguishing physical and affect states 
or, or they lack words of, of for emotions. And that uh, impede uh, on, on their ability to recognize feelings in other people. There is avoidance of emotion, especially of fear of failure and humiliation, um, and that can be used as a self-regulatory um, uh, strategy. Uh, Bellanger and others have, have found that. Uh, vigilance, sensitivity, reactivity, and negative affects to humiliation and negative events are associated with uh, pathological narcissism. Shame plays a significant role, and fear is an underlying, um, is actually underlying several management and avoidance strategies typical for narcissistic personality functioning, such as competitiveness, perfectionism, risk taking, and procrastination. Um, so, what implications does this all have um, for evaluating, uh, first of all, empathic functioning? Uh, we, we can clearly see that there is evidence for compromised empathic functioning in MPD, but not for an inability or its absence, as has been the, the over, uh, over the years uh, a typical way of looking at, at uh, people with pathological narcissism. And NPD. As research suggests to sum up, that there is a neurological deficiency in emotional empathy. There, can, there is a motivational and s or self regulatory based fluctuation, uh, the engagement, disengagement in cognitive empathy. And there is a tendency to overestimate own emotional empathic capability. And then there is an impact of emotion dysregulation on empathic functioning. So, how does this look then? <laughs> what, is, what is the patient in this? Uh, well, uh, I should try to, 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 um, uh, to, to um, uh, give some examples here. Uh, when we have motivational-based empathic disengagement, especially in grandiose states, they can be uh, associated to grandiose fantasies. For instance, somebody is just so up in their own uh, sense of feeling okay that they, they just don't see uh, uh, somebody uh, uh, who, who ha are in a different type of, of uh, psychological state. Um, in other words, and there is an internal conviction of, of, of superiority. Um, an another type can be accompanied by more abrasive or, or um, manipulative pursuits of self-interest. So this can be more or less deliberate. One can say that I don't, I don't give a shit if I hurt somebody. I don't care. I'm going to do this. I'm going to find what is best for me, what other people think and feel that's, that's uh, uh, their business. And that sort of um, can be a more deliberate conscious reasoning. While others are just focused on what they want, they are more self-centered and self-directed, self-absorbed, say. And they, they are unaware of the effects of what they cause in others. I'm, I'm outlining this because the treatment strategies for these different types of approaches are very different. And there can be significant collisions if you apply one uh, uh, strategy, uh, for instance, uh, telling somebody they should learn to see, uh, when they actually are not aware of uh, uh, that they, uh, what they are doing to other people. Um, there is also a, a, a motivational based empathic engagement. Uh, I had one patient who, we don't, okay. Uh, I had one patient who said, um, um, uh, I, I thought when I married my husband that I had found one of the most empathic men in the world. He helped me figure out my family problems. Um, he helped me with my sister's divorce. Uh, and my friends really ad adored him. But when we had marital arguments, disagreements, and so he was completely oblivious. He shut down, seemed totally cold, disinterested, and even told me us to shut up. So I, I don't understand this. 
And there you have much more of a engagement uh, ability to engage in others, with, even with skillfulness and accuracy. But although underneath that the, these people's relating may still be influenced by narcissistic interpersonal patterns or by covert self-serving uh, um, interests or negative affects. Um, we shall take a look at when there are deficit-based empathic uh, disengagement. Example of that is a patient who said, I have always been accused for not being empathic. Um, but that's not really true. I don't see that. I do see and I am aware of others' reactions and suffering. But it is so enormously painful for me to be around people who suffer or who are upset. Uh, I can't stand it. I just have to leave the room. Uh, I have, I've learned to excuse myself before I just lost my temper. I do feel horrible about this, but I can't do anything about it. And this relates more to the vulnerability caused by def def uh, deficient emotion recognition, not understanding other reactions, or deficient emotion tolerance of other feelings, or of own feelings evoked or triggered by others' feelings. And these are all quite uh, complex things. It can be result in a shame-driven withdrawal with intense internal experiences, or it can be uh, expressed more in self-serving or self-protective cri critical or competitive aggressive behavior. There is also a deficit-based empathic engagement. These people who are, can be very, very tuned in and, and uh, in, with an engaging attitude, inviting the sharing of uh, experiences, but be un, unable to relate to or process or interact uh, and respond to, to person. There are other underpinnings, uh, impaired ability for self-disclosure, uh, self-promotional or protective perfectionist, and reversible pers perspective taking. This is this tendency to smoothly adapt the, the therapist's comments and interpretations and seemingly inter internalize those given to perspectives, uh, those given perspectives. Th these are these patients who can be in treatment year after year, everything seems to be fine, but nothing happens. These are patients who come to you and say, well, my third psychotherapist, he really po pointed out that I, I should be more, more considerate vis-a-vis -vis my wife. And my fifth th therapist, he pointed out that, that I am envious. And, and I said, but if all this has been pointing out to you, why are you here? You say, I don't know. Okay, implications for treatment. Um, Clinicians' observations of the narcissistic patient's function do often not concur with the patient's own experience of themselves or form formulations of their problems. And this is something that is sort of is the, the basic stage. Uh, although on the surface, intelligent, articulate, even with moments of perspective taking and reflection, the narcissistic patient also presents with a significant resistance or inability to deeply connect attached and change. There are doubts, shame, and insecurity, confused self-identity, self-criticism, and the combined with a range of self-enhancing and self-protective or self-serving strategies that contribute to the sometimes drastic self-regulatory uh, interpersonal stance. And um, there is usually a conditional or limited alliance is unfolding that can seem collaborative and interactive with common language and even with processing of challenging inquiries and complex interpretations. But the problem is that the patient's motive for seeking help and experience of facing treatment may be totally separate from acknowledging the problems and work towards change. And, and that is something that needs to be clarified from the very beginning. So this is my last um, uh, thing that I've been uh, working on here. Um, the, it's very important to apply an exploratory and collaborative approach to diagnosis and alliance building. 
that attend to both the patient's internal experiences and motivations as well as to their external and interpersonal functioning. And what you take first or second or how you take it is very individual for the specific patient. It's also very important to identify real areas of real competence, real functioning, assets and accomplishments and differentiate them from exaggerated or non-existing achievements and wished for talents. It's um, important to acknowledge areas of actual individual uniqueness uh, or special talents, moments of superiority uh, and potentials as part of the overall self-regulatory function because we want to in include that in, in, in our uh, work too as well as uh, include the, the, the bottoms. And the, it's easier to reach the bottoms if you first sort of include the, the peak experiences. Um, especially for the young people, it's important to differentiate age-appropriate ambitions and proactive aspirations from high-flying uh, 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 aspirations or unrealistic fantasies. Patients with MPD can struggle with uncertainty, shame, excessive self-criticism and insecurity related to their actual talents uh, and, and competence, and uh, uh, parallel with uh, enhanced self presentation. And it's also very important to identify shifts in self-esteem from grandeur to inferior and vice versa with accompanying self-regulatory changes in self-enhancement and devaluation, namely to focus on a specific situation and really e explore and figure out what is happening and, 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 and why. Because the subjective experience of those interpersonal and situational conditions can that uh, cause such shifts are diagnostic hallmarks for um, pathological narcissism and MPD. And uh, I would like to end with, the, I want to thank uh, Arielle Baskin Summers and uh, her colleague Elisabeth Krusemark for, for very valuable collaboration on the, the uh, uh, section on empathic um, uh, 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 Empathy in, in MPD, there's been a work on integrating clinical and, and empirical studies. So, okay.